SOLID.js, a small and fast UI framework built on top of simple and performant reactivity concepts. It's part of the new wave of libraries, just like Svelte, which means that it's quicker than your usual React, Angular or Vue in pretty much all benchmark tests, while also stepping away from some of the standard concepts such as the virtual DOM. What got me excited about it is that SOLID.js seems to deliver on the real headache-free reactivity promise we got from other frameworks during the years, while also quickly building a strong community around it. Just as an FYI, I've been involved in the front-end development space for more than 10 years and, during this time, I worked with a large number of libraries and tools. React has been my preferred UI tool for quite a while now, but after I spend a few hours with it, I feel like SolidJS could be a real alternative. In this video, we'll go through the SolidJS basics and we'll build a small app combining the only two things I'm barely good at, learning new tech stuff and losing money in the stock market. Without further ado, we'll jump right into it. You'll need Node to start and the setup process is straightforward. Just run the four lines mentioned under the documentation page and we are ready to go. SOLID.js uses Vite as its build tool, which is one of the hottest libraries out there at the moment. Also, of course, there is TypeScript support. After the huge adoption it had in the last few years, it's hard to believe starting a new project without TypeScript is really an option at this point. Other than that, the project structure should be self-explanatory. We have an index.tsx file, which is the main entry point in our app, and inside here we'll build our application using components. One small thing I want to mention is that by npm installing SAS and simply changing the stylesheet extensions to SCSS, you'll also get SAS support, which, in my opinion, is a must in any large project. I'm adding a few folders inside the source directory to better organize my code. Again, pretty straightforward stuff. I'll use the API folder to store my fetch API REST calls and the services folder for any needed business logic. I'll jump over some of the implementation, especially if it isn't related to Solid, but I'm linking the project git repo in the description so you'll be able to look at the entire code in detail there. The index file is loading the app.tsx main component and is rendering it into the DOM. Components are the main building block of the modern single page application. It is worth mentioning that SolidJS components can be reliably compiled into web components. SolidJS is fairly similar to React when it comes to its component declaration and the use of JSX. Therefore, the transition to this new library will be pretty seamless if you have prior React experience. I am defining a header component in the TSX file, which is a simple function returning JSX. In JSX, we can easily register event handlers for DOM events. In the header, our app will display a search input field, which will allow users to look up various companies based on their ticker symbol. In order to fetch some real data and simulate to some extent a real-life scenario, we'll work with the third-party stock API offered by Polygon.io. In the free tier, they provide a few endpoints we can use for our demo purposes. The stock API TS file is a collection of various fetch calls to Polygon REST endpoints. There really isn't anything of interest here from a technical standpoint, so we'll get back to our header component. Whenever an event is triggered by the user pressing the enter key, we'll send a search string to Polygon via fetch get call and we'll get a list of suggestions as a response. Now we'll get to discuss one of the main primitives SolidJS is built on top of. The signal. Together with memos and effects, signals are the foundation of reactivity in Solid. They contain values that change over time. When you change a signal's value, it automatically updates anything that uses it. Signals are event emitters that hold a list of subscriptions. They notify listeners whenever their value changes. The emphasis here is on automatic updates. If you have built things with React and hooks, you probably know the pain of maintaining dependency arrays in order to correctly run side effects when component state changes. Well, you don't need to worry about this anymore. Signals are built on top of the observer pattern and, whenever they are read, they notify all listeners that are tracking it and updates are performed accordingly. Another major difference compared to React and clearly an extremely exciting one is the fact that component functions are executed only once when the elements are first added to the DOM. Any subsequent update is handled by the SolidJS reactivity system I described earlier. So no more rendering, reconciliation or virtual DOM diffing. Solid knows what changed, what needs to be updated and performs those updates directly in the real DOM, all this leading to great performance results. If you have experience with the UI development, you know that conditions rendering is one of the most basic scenarios. SolidJS solves this by providing a specialized show component. By the way, notice the signals are function which need to be called in order to retrieve the value. This might feel a little bit weird at first, but it is necessary in order to trigger all the reactivity concepts I mentioned earlier. If you worked with other libraries, you are probably familiar with the concept of computed properties. Solid enables this with a concept called derived signals. Any function that accesses a signal value will, in turn, become also a signal. Even though they don't store any actual 
variable value, they will update any effect that depends on them and they will trigger renders if included in the view. Just like with conditional rendering, Solid offers a specialized for component to allow you to reliably iterate and render a list of elements. A small enhancement I really appreciate here is the fact that, using the for component, we don't need to worry about defining unique keys for each element in the array. This is a requirement in other libraries like React or Svelte in order to ensure better performance, but during the years I saw a lot of developers forgetting to define keys when iterating over elements. The solids for component is keyed by default and this allows the library to make efficient updates in the DOM if the order of elements changes for instance. There are a couple of things I want to do whenever the user clicks on one of the suggestions. On one hand, I'm setting the list of tickers to an empty array to remove the suggestions box from the DOM. Next, I want to store in a common place the user selection so that we can work with it anywhere in the app. To do this, we'll define a store, which is Solid's answer for nested activity and a good mechanism to handle state management. Note that SolidJS also provides a context API for those familiar with React. The context is being created and managed by the Reactive system and it's an elegant way to pass data throughout the application. Our store has two values, an active ticker for the selected search suggestion and the list of stocks we'll address in a second. Getting back to the header component, we can now link the newly defined store in our function and then start getting or setting the values directly. So, when the onClick handler is called, we can simply update the active ticker value in the store and this change will be propagated throughout the app. Then, any view, nested signal, memo or effect relying on it will be re-executed. On the styling topic, all CSS files can be found in Git, but I just want to mention I am using CSS modules to ensure my styles rules are isolated. This is a good practice in general and I advise you to follow the same approach since it forces you to think of reusability and CSS rule structures. Back in the main app component we can now fetch the information from the store. Whenever an active ticker is selected I want to display a model showing the company details. We will use the reactive properties of signals for this and will define an isDetailsModel function monitoring one of the store values. While we are in the main app, let's also render the store stock list in the DOM using the for component. There isn't anything too special about this logic. For the companies that the user follows, we'll display in the DOM some pricing information for the current day. Then, based on the isDetailModel derived signal, we'll conditionally render another component in the DOM. We'll pass the active ticker as a property and the function to be called whenever the user wants to close the model. Notice that I prefer to send the function as a property to the child component in order to outline again how similar SolidJS can be to React. Know, however, that Solid also easily allows the capture of custom events. There are a couple of interesting things to discuss in the stock details component. First, I'm making use of TypeScript and clearly defining what type of properties my component can receive. Then, I will use Solid's create resource function to perform an async request. This approach allows me to avoid calling the async function directly and is giving me easy access to some useful information such as the loading state of the async call or the error state if something went wrong. Since we'll display the content in a model, Solid offers a component called portal which allows us to insert DOM elements outside the page layout. Then, we'll use show to display some content. Remember that the stock element is the result of a create resource call, so we are able to display a fallback if the resource is still loading or it failed. The rest of the JSX I added is of no real interest. I'm adding some of the information I received from the REST API as a response and then I'm allowing the user to click on the follow button to add this company to his list. In the follow callback, I'm making an additional call to the API to fetch the daily values. All this information is then pushed to the store stocks list and it will be propagated to all the listeners associated with that signal. At this point, the whole workflow is almost done. We are able to search for stocks and follow them to stay up to date with the current prices. One last thing I would like to do though is to cache the list of followed stocks and the daily values in the browser's local storage. This will allow us to maintain the data between sessions and avoid making repetitive calls to the REST API. So this is a great opportunity to discuss another building block of the solid library, the create effect. These functions are called whenever the signals referenced inside them change their values. So since we are referencing the store stocks inside the effect, we can be certain that this logic will be executed when something changes in the list. What I'm going to do is simply stringify the array and store it locally. Then we need to retrieve the local information whenever the app is opened. Just like other frameworks, solid offers a few lifecycle methods we can use to run code in. The more than popular on-mount method is what we need in this case. So this sums up the quick overview of SolidJS. Of course, the library offers way more features than we got the chance to look at, so I advise you to spend a couple of hours on their documentation page to really understand how powerful this is. My conclusion is that the reactivity alone makes this a library to really look at. Small things like the elegant store support, the helper UI components or the create resource function are just the cherry on top. When considering a new tool, 
Besides things such as community, stability and long term plans from the maintainers, I really value the learning curve and the impact a switch to the new library would have on an existing dev team. Because it resembles it so much, I see it as a real alternative especially to React moving forward. If you've made it this far, please consider adding a comment, liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.